the plane so well laid out for Australia, is that not to get the win? Yeah, amazing. I mean, I think we dominated for about 80 minutes. We had a 10 minute spell at the beginning of the second half, which we got punished with, which you're going to get from a team that's been in uh, very, very good form prior to coming into this fixture. I think Gary and his staff have done a fantastic job with Birmingham. They've played with a lot of confidence and they've had some outstanding results coming into the game. But I must admit, in the first half, I felt I felt we were the team with the legs, we were the team with the energy, we were the team with the quality. and. Um, I think we needed to take our chances when they came. We got one of them. But you know, if, you, if you're not going to get that second or third goal, you know there's always going to be a chance that um, they're going to score. And the two lads up top for, for Birmingham are a handful at this level. They really are a handful and they're doing really, really well. And that's what proved the, the difference between winning and drawing today. Um, I thought, we're disappointed with the goal. The defenders are disappointed with the goal, of course they are, and the team in general are disappointed with the way we started the second half, but the reaction to losing that goal was second to none. And that was proven by the way that our fans will leave here disappointed at that result, but they'll be, or they were, when you look at the reception the players got at the end of it without winning it, um, the fans were, I think, delighted with the overall performance. How good was Lee Cameron today? <laughs> God, he's a... Pain in the backside, isn't he? Listen, experienced campaigner who's been there, seen it, done it, and he pulled off some wonderful saves today and probably man of the match, to be honest with you. And that, that sort of sums it up in itself. Um, but again, credit to Birmingham. When you're not playing well, the next best thing is to ensure you don't lose the game, and that's what they've done. We are very, very frustrated. Um, I thought we played some fantastic football at the time. I think the energy levels shown were brilliant. The, the rotation of players and movement and getting to bylines and getting crosses in and getting shots in and I think as a as a coach that's what you want. And you continue doing that, eventually the luck turns your way and you get the breaks. So we're disappointed, but we're not downhearted. Where did that performance rank this season for you? Well, again from an offensive point of view and energy level, it's it's right up there. Uh, possibly with Aston Villa without getting the result. But then you look at dogged performances like the Preston and like the Middlesbrough one, where we've had to hold on, where we've had to defend, even West Brom at times when they went to 10 men and we got sucker punched late on. I mean, we could be sitting here on the back of four, four straight wins. No, we're not. But we're not overly disappointed with that because we know you take the results away from the last four games, performances have been excellent in different circumstances. Some of them have had to dig in, defend properly, to be a good teammate and cover for each other. Today it was all about the offensive and the, you know what, there was a lot of trust. There was players playing with a smile on their face. There was um, belief in each other. There was a team. Would you have taken from these four games eight points? I think prior to it, you probably would have. Mm. Now looking back, you're disappointed in eight points out of the four games. Um, just given the way that the, the performances have gone. But then I'm greedy, am I? You would be greedy, I think, after looking at after watching the watching the performances. Um, but again, you have to learn from things like that and you have to ensure that hopefully that type of thing doesn't happen again and you get what you deserve. What are the lessons that you've got to learn from today? Maybe? I think we've got to start better uh, at the beginning of the second half. We've come in high, we've, we've gone out. The plan was right, but I thought, I just thought that we, we should have expected Birmingham to come out because in that first half, we, we, we had a lot of the game, most of the game. But ultimately, in every 90 minutes, there's always going to be a spell when the opposition have that 5, 10, 15 minute spell, and that was theirs. And we weren't at the races for that first 5, 10 minutes there. And, and that, that was a disappointing thing. Uh, and we were rightly sucker punched again. Um, <coughs> but the reaction, as I say, after after that, we could have got nervous, we could have went under. Just, I mean, Hillsborough's sort of one of these places that you're not sure which way it's going to go. But the fans stuck with the players. Even when it went 1-1, the fans lifted the players again and really got behind them and the players reacted to that. Some of the runs from Fox and Palmer down the line whipped across six-yard box. Fletcher was outstanding again. But then a lot of credit's got to go to substitutes to come on. I mean, we took a little bit of a gamble in the last five minutes. We're chucking the two strikers on, taking off one of our midfielders because that was going to open us up a little bit potentially to get... To, uh, to maybe lose a goal and end up losing the game. But 
Atty was so unlucky. The, the, the chest control's brilliant. The first shot's off is brilliant. Campy's come back to him. Hey, you can analyse it. And then he's an inch away when Adam Reach fires it across the six-yard box again. But we've created a lot of chances there today. And I think you continue to do that, we'll win more games than we lose.